I recently had a question on one of my videos asking how do I get better at playing guitar and while it's impossible for me to answer that question uh, and cover everything, I do have a few tips that I think will help basically anyone and that's what I'll be discussing today. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen, and it's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. I recently got a question. How do I get better at playing guitar? Keep learning licks or learn to play rock songs? Now, that's a very interesting question. And it's totally impossible for me to answer it uh, to the person asking, because I don't know the person. I don't know where the person is at. Uh, but I do have a few tips, uh, because that whole do I learn licks or do I learn songs uh, is an in interesting discussion. You could throw into the mix, do I learn uh, exercises? Do I play exercises? Do I play songs? Do I learn licks? What should I do? So I have a few tips that I think uh, will help improve anyone. I think the last one will be the most important one, but... Uh, the first one is uh, do what you like, because at the end of the day, the really important thing is that you spend time with your instrument. So if it's always an uphill battle, so if you really dislike exercises, but you really like learning songs, then why not just learn a bunch of songs? But do uh, try to learn the kinds of songs that push you technically. So instead of just learning uh, the same old stuff over and over again, like, let's say... And then something like... Uh, I don't know what song that was, or, uh, and then you go to... Back streets, back, all right! <laughs> um, if you just do all that kind of stuff and you're comfortable with uh, power chords, there's not really a whole lot of sense in practicing more power chords. You need to up your game a bit. But still, the most important thing is that you spend time with your instrument and learn the things that you actually want to learn. If someone out there, be it a teacher, a parent, anyone says you should not be playing that because blah blah blah, but that's what you love doing, uh, you should probably ignore that advice, even though it comes from a good place. So, the second thing is, and I touched upon this already, is that you uh, should work at the edge of your abilities because you want to be pushing your abilities so that you can actually become better. So it can be speed, it can be control, it can be how far you can bend a note, uh, anything really. And uh, so, but speed is a very good example, a very easy example to explain. So let's say you're doing this. That. Um, and let's say you're comfortable doing 120 beats per minute, uh, or that's kind of your edge. You don't want to just be doing 110 you want to be doing 124, 26, and kind of, if this is 120, going both sides of that. So you go 130 and go back to 120 or 118 or something and constantly keep pushing that boundary. Um, you don't have to use a metronome for this. You can just do it. If you don't like metronomes, you can just do it kind of manually. So you try to play it faster than you actually can and then you take it back and so on and so forth. 
kind of pushing that boundary. It can be memorizing intervals. Um, so you know that this is a major third. And this is a minor third. But you don't know what this is. Uh, and you can you can learn to identify more intervals than you already know. Uh, push yourself, push yourself and uh, get quicker at identifying intervals and uh, stuff like that. So work at the edge of your abilities. I know because uh, I'm lazy in many ways uh, that it's sometimes just comfortable to just play something um, that isn't very challenging but it's fun to play but that doesn't really lead to progress. Now I don't mean that everything you have everything that you do has to be kind of super competitive I want to beat my last time I want to be faster again today it can be if that's the kind of thing you enjoy but I, again I get back to my first point that uh, you should always enjoy what you're doing okay so I think that's two points I have a third one here and that's set yourself goals. What do you want? See, not everyone has to become the next uh, guitar god out there. Um, some people are happy with less and that's fine. But if you do want to progress, you do need to set yourself some goals. It can be, I, I'm going to learn five songs this week and the songs are these and that kind of gives you a deadline and makes you work a bit harder, especially if you say it out loud. Um, and especially if you say to someone else, because that means you're kind of accountable. So you can say, uh, have if you're, you can say it to your parents. You can say it to uh, a friend or a significant other, who will probably say, "Does that mean I have to do all the cleaning around here again?" And you say yes, because I have to learn these five songs. And setting goals in general. Uh, I mean, and you need to have them clearly defined. So uh, it's not good just to say, I want to become the best guitar player out there. Great. What type of guitar player do you want to become? I don't know. I just want to become the greatest. Well, uh, there are very many different kinds of great guitar players out there. Ingve Malmsteen, Pat Metheny. They're slightly different, aren't they? John McLaughlin. Hmm, he's quite good. B.B. Uh, King. Slightly different, eh? It helps to put a name on it. So if you want to become the greatest guitar player in the world ever, fine. But define what that means for you. Uh, so for me that was, I want to become Ingve Malmsteen. I want to become Steve Vai. I want to become Gary Moore. I want to play fast. And it uh, seems we have a chainsaw going out there. So I don't know if you can hear it. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll take a short break here. Okay, so now they've stopped. <laughs> Where was I? Yes, you need a clearly defined goal. A name helps. Like I said, for me it was Ingve Malmsteen, Steve Vai, Gary Moore, those kinds of names. But what that does is it gives you very clear, uh, smaller uh, kind of goals to aim for. So if I want to learn how to play like Ingve, I probably need to learn how to sweep pick. <laughs> So I know what I need to be working on. Uh, if it's just a vague kind of general, I want to become the greatest guitar player ever, then you can work on all sorts of things that have nothing to do with each other. So in the end, uh, do I learn licks or do I learn songs uh, will depend on your goal. What do you want to become? Uh, so. Clearly defined goals, and then when you have that clearly uh, almost utopian, if you want to become the world's greatest guitar player, you say, I want to become like Ingve Malmsteen or whoever, uh, then you can break that down into smaller pieces and you can forget about the end goal because then it becomes about just learning stuff and having fun with it. And when I look back on my kind of formative years as a teenager sitting uh, in my teenage room doing... <laughs> Uh, doing exercises, learning uh, Steve Vai songs, Ingve Malmsteen songs, Gary Moore stuff, uh, that's some of the best uh, 
Those are some of the best times that I've ever had. It was great fun. Uh, and it doesn't seem like work. So, uh, that was tip number three. Have clear goals. Okay, two more to go. Uh, again, I was interrupted by that chain, so... <laughs> I've never been interrupted this much during a video. Yes, the next one is record yourself. So, record yourself playing. Why should you do that? Because it will give you valuable information about how you sound. And it's really easy these days. Everyone has smartphones and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, back in the day when I was starting out, it was a lot more difficult, but it could be done. And it's really a very valuable tool. And that it's very simple. Record yourself. Um, record yourself playing over backing tracks, uh, over anything, and uh, just record yourself and listen to how you sound, because it can be a real eye-opener. And that leads us quite nicely into the next one, which is develop your ears. And this might just be the most important one of all. Develop your ears. It's so important to have good ears as a musician. Now, I'm not trying to knock sight reading. Not at all. It's great if you can sight read. It can be really good for you in so many ways. But developing your ears. Music enters us through our ears. Why on earth wouldn't you develop those things? So, ditch tab. I mean, you don't have to ditch tab completely, but learn songs by tra transcribing them. Don't have to actually write them down, but turn on um, a song from Spotify, put on a song from Spotify or a CD or a cassette or vinyl or whatever, and try to transcribe it. That will be so good for you, because if you don't have good ears, let's say you're bending a note. If you can't hear that there's something wrong there, then you don't know that you should actually try to improve your bending technique. If your vibrato sounds like this... ...and you don't notice that there's anything wrong with that... Um, what are you going to do about it? Then you have to rely on uh, outside advice to someone, a teacher for instance, to say that, hey, you need to work on those things. And for sure, that's what most of us have to do in the beginning. But at some point, you have to become your own coach. Um, teachers get you started and uh, the rest is really... Well, a lot of it's really up to you. So you have to become your own critic. And in order for yourself to become your own critic uh, and, in an, and an informed critic, I mean, you have to be, uh, you, don't, you can't be excessively negative or excessively positive. But uh, uh, in order for you to recognize what it is that you need to improve, you need to have good ears. And that's why you should improve your ears. And then there's the added bonus. You can learn songs from, from, well, I was about to say tape. <laughs> no one uses tape anymore. Uh, but you can learn songs by listening to them. If you're really good at it, you can just sit in on gigs where you don't know the songs uh, beforehand and you have no sheet music and you just follow the basis. That's what I do quite often and I've had tons of gigs like that. Even your solos will become better uh, because you'll know what's going on underneath even though you might not explicitly know what's going on underneath. So you know that this... You'll know which chord, which uh, notes you can play over that, especially if the guitar is in tune. This one isn't. Um, must have been that chainsaw. So yeah, develop your ears. So, those are my kind of blanket tips for everyone. Uh, play a lot, spend a lot of time with your instrument, record yourself, have goals, develop your ears, uh, have fun with it basically. Uh, that's really, that's more important than anything else. And it's fine um, to be um, 
have a goal like I just want to know a few chords so I can play around a campfire or whatever. Uh, that's totally fine. I have more of these types of videos, uh, kind of the psychology of playing, um, and I have lessons. I'll put playlists here somewhere so you can check out those. And uh, click like if you like the video. And if you found this helpful, please do share it with other people as well. Comment, let me know what you thought, and especially if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, Subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification thing and join me on Patreon because you get all of my music and you can even take it for free. Uh, plus you get a bunch of exclusives and yeah, you can listen to it and decide this is no good. I'm not going to pay. So uh, there's a link in the description to that. Other than that, I hope you have a nice day. Take care. Goodbye.